you'll feel like your work is all-consuming for you, and you don't remember the last time you actually enjoyed yourself. You really need a vacation on Pluto. Book a unique tour from Riddle to the most remote corner of the solar system. You'll spend 10 nights at a futuristic hotel on a nitrogen ice plateau. Go to Pluto's moon, Sharon, by the world's first space cable car. Go skiing on methane snow. And moreover, you'll be the first to know where Pluto's red whale came from and what it really is. You'll also find out what color is the sunset here and how many Earthlings can fit on this dwarf planet. Are you ready to spend your vacation on Pluto? Leave all your problems on the Earth and book my tour today. Tours to Pluto will be available from the year 2442. The flight to Pluto will take about 10 years. How to spend all this time without getting bored? All is going to be taken care of thanks to this episode's sponsor, World of Tanks. It's a free-to-play PC online game with more than 100 million players all over the solar system. Engage in epic battles in World of Tanks with your friends and other spaceship passengers. Try your hand at being a real tank commander by trying different game strategies. More than 600 authentic tanks Tanks are at your service. Destroyers, artillery, light, medium, and heavy tanks. World of Tanks also has over 40 battle arenas with unique landscapes, deserts, forests, urban industrial zones, and open fields. Use the features of surroundings to your advantage. Download World of Tanks right now using my link in the description. Use the code TANKMANIA to get a 7-day free trial premium account, 250,000 credits, the premium tank Excelsior, and 3 rental tanks for 10 battles each. With World of Tanks, you'll hardly notice you had such a long flight to Pluto. The main reason to go to Pluto is the mysterious red whale. The whale was first spotted on images taken by NASA's New Horizons spacecraft in 2015. But what is it really? To see the whale, you have to get to Pluto's equator. Along it, there's the darkest and the oldest region on the dwarf planet, Cthulhu Macula, or the Red Whale. It has a diameter of 2,990 kilometers. Most likely, this dark-colored region is the result of a massive impact, the same intergalactic collision that formed Pluto's gigantic moon named Charon. But how did it get its red coloring? Yasuhito Sekine, an associate professor at the University of Tokyo, conducted an experiment to investigate this mystery. He heated solutions of organic molecules that could have been present on the newly forming Pluto soon after the formation of the solar system. After heating solutions to 50 degrees Celsius for two months, Sekine got the same dark reddish color. But how could there be such a high temperature on Pluto? Another scholar, Hidenori Genda, an associate professor at the Tokyo Institute of Technology, conducted computer simulations of a giant impact on Pluto, which could have resulted in the formation of Charon. Genda found that such a powerful collision could have created a huge pool of hot water near Pluto's equator. And as this giant pool cooled, complex organic materials were formed on the surface, and these materials eventually gave the whale its deep red color. Do you want to take the most extraordinary selfie of your life? Come to Pluto to take a picture with the red whale. You may ask, but are there proper conditions for tourists on Pluto? Shouldn't such space travel be dangerous? No, it's not just non-dangerous, but on the contrary, a tour to Pluto could extend your life for a few hundred years. Scientists figured out that on this dwarf planet, humans can live four times as long as on the Earth, between 300 and 320 years. It's all about gravity. If it's less than half the Earth's gravity, it could significantly slow the aging processes. Just imagine, Pluto's gravity is just one-sixteenth that of the Earth's. Scientists obtained data on life expectancy from a mathematical model, and you may be the first to test it on a practical level. The average temperature on Pluto's surface is 50 Kelvin. That's about minus 223 degrees Celsius. 
in-orbit fusion power plants would help to change it. They'll transfer energy to the surface of the dwarf planet and raise its temperature. But don't worry, the power plants won't obscure your view of Charon, Pluto's largest moon. It appears nine times larger in the sky than our moon. Pluto and Charon experience synchronous rotation, meaning the same side of Charon forever faces the same side of Pluto, even as they orbit around a common point in space. This will enable us to build the world's first space cable car between Pluto and Charon. Imagine waking up at a villa among Pluto's nitrogen ice, drinking a cup of coffee in the cable car, and taking a morning stroll on Charon's water ice. And what about crowds of tourists? Pluto's surface area is almost the same as that of contemporary Russia. That's about 1 29th the surface area of the Earth. But don't worry, you won't have to queue up for ages. Even if the entire population of our planet arrives at Pluto at the same time, the population density per square kilometer will be the same as in the Netherlands. That's 440 people per square kilometer. For reference, New York has an overall population density of 10,194 people per square kilometer. Just imagine that on Pluto, which has no atmosphere, you'll breathe 23 times easier than in New York. But even if you're not planning on moving to the icy dwarf planet, you can always spend your vacation here. That's actually quite a lot to see. And it's not just the red whale. What sights can you see on Pluto? To enjoy a full Sharon in the sky, you have to stay somewhere in the equatorial region. By the way, that's the only place you can observe the alternation of day and night on Pluto, due to the fact that the rotational axis of the planet is highly inclined. On Pluto's poles, night changes to day once every 124 years. And at the equator, one day takes just about 153 hours. And I'd advise you not to miss the sunrises and sunsets. During that time, the sky looks amazingly blue. But don't forget that this dwarf planet spins backwards so that on Pluto the sun rises in the west. It looks like a dim bulb, though. But it's spring on Pluto now, which means there'll be a gradual increase of sunlight. Pretty soon, the day will be even brighter there than a full moon on the Earth. Where to go and what to see on Pluto? The area with craters strewn across the dark landscape of Vega Terra is clearly visible in the latest images from NASA's New Horizons spacecraft. The craters have bright walls and rims, making them stand out from their darker surroundings. NASA thinks the bright areas of the craters are the methane ice that settled on top of the water ice. How and why the bright methane ice settled on the crater rims remains a mystery. You can try to solve it while you're walking around Vega Terra. Conveniently, the area with craters is close to another landmark, Pluto's heart. It's also called Tombaugh Regio, named after Clyde Tombaugh, the discoverer of Pluto. The left lobe of the heart is considered to be a giant nitrogen glacier that emerged from the crater. So don't forget to take your skates to Pluto. The diameter of the Tombaugh Regio is 2,300 kilometers. It's the largest skating rink in the solar system. Several mountain ranges stretch across the heart, the highest of which is the Tenzing Montes up to three and a half kilometers high. Thus, you can also take your skis and snowboards with you. The Tamba Regio is ideal for enjoying outdoor activities. The thing to remember is, don't accidentally eat methane snow while you're skiing or snowboarding. But there's no way that Pluto has only a bright side. And let's just have a look at the other side. What are the drawbacks of spending your vacation or your life on Pluto? The the first drawback is the flight time. In total, three spacecraft have reached Pluto's orbit. The first was Pioneer 10, which took 11 years to do so. Voyager was even slower to cope with that task and accomplished it in 12 and a half years. 
And the New Horizons space probe took nine years and almost six months. It'll take you about ten years to reach Pluto. But don't be so quick to give up this quest. Remember, low gravity can extend your life to 320 years. Spending only ten of them on the flight is no big deal. Another drawback of Pluto is its low temperature. It's quite difficult to survive when it's minus 218 on the hottest day of the year. But at the same time, such a temperature will allow us to do things that are impossible on Earth. For example, we'll be able to construct magnetic levitation trains. This will enable tourists to travel conveniently from one of Pluto's landmarks to another, and not just tourists. In fact, we should all move from the Earth to Pluto, and I'll tell you why. In seven and a half billion years, our Sun will be over 200 times the size it is today when it becomes a red giant. By then, the average temperature on Pluto will reach 20 degrees Celsius. Well, everyone's talking about colonizing Mars, you better start thinking of your own mansion on Pluto. When the sun turns into a red giant, Mars will become a burning desert, just like Venus is now. Meanwhile, your descendants on Pluto will be enjoying a comfortable temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Due to increasing temperatures, some of the ice will evaporate from Pluto's surface, resulting in the creation of a denser atmosphere. Some of the water could turn into oceans, and then, who knows, some Earth-like life forms could possibly emerge on Pluto. For example, real red whales. A new tour from Riddle, swimming with red whales on Pluto. Spend an unforgettable week on a comfortable yacht in the middle of the ocean. Grab your chance to swim with the most extraordinary animals in the solar system. Book your tour today. There are only two places left. The flight time is not included in the tour duration. The tour operator doesn't guarantee the availability of whales on Pluto. The tour is available from the year 7 billion, 500 million, 2000.